All right, hello everyone, and welcome back to Cutabo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the Werner's Old Bits mod, which is being released by forum user Teak the Lake Dreaming. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is a series of parts to let you build World War II era German rockets, such as the V2, which is pretty cool. I've always had a fascination with rockets like that, and this mod will now let us build it here in the game along with some of the more interesting experimental designs they were working on so let's jump into the vehicle assembly building and have a look at we what we do get and this is actually one of those mods i've been meaning to look at for ages now but just never seem to get around to it but thanks to the recent 1.5 update it came on my radar again so here we are and let's grab ourselves a mark one command pod for size comparison and then of course turn on janitor's closet just leaving on over his old stuff and we'll start by having a look at our couple of command pods we have here. The first is the A9 inline cockpit. And we can just place this thing here. Very cool looking thing. Not exactly stock alike, but hey, it's still entertaining. And as for its stats here, it will hold one crew member with a minimum of one to operate. It has a reaction wheel, a crew report, 50 electric charge, and 7.5 mono propellant. A decent little inline cockpit pit for you to use. Quite nice and funky looking with the yellow stripage. So the next one we have is the control room for the A4 rocket and this one is a bit more interesting to me being of course based on the V2 and it is an unmanned command pod with SAS and 10 electric charge and can be opened up to see all the internal workings and you know has enough room for you to perhaps shove a piece of scientific instrumentation in there if you so desire which is always fun so quite cool there. We then have have the control section for A1 and A2 rockets, which is a tiny little thing. Look at that. It's just so tiny. I, I mean, that's as far as I can zoom in. That's how small that thing is. But it is an unmanned command pod with the reaction wheel, SAS, and one singular point of electric charge. It's, uh, it actually got lost in there. Look at that. <laughs> It's just such a tiny little thing. Oh, wonderful. The next one we have is the A3 and A5 rocket control section, which we can pop on there. Pretty typical looking nose cone. And this one is an unmanned command pod with SAS and five electric charge. We then have the A5 control section, which is almost identical in, well, it is identical in size and design, but its stats are different, being an unmanned command pod with a built-in data transmitter this time. SAS and 7 electric charge. Now, moving on and uh, zooming out to the fuel tank section, we have the dual fuel tank for A10, which holds 1,228 liquid fuel and 1,501 oxidizer and is gigantic. Look at that ginormous thing. And as you can see, it has four different attachment points on the uh, outside, and then one attachment point in there on the interior, of course, for the different elements and aerodynamic bits that go with this thing. But very cool looking. I do quite enjoy it. Now, the next one we have is the dual fuel tank for the A11, having 11,208 liquid fuel and 13,700 oxidizer, and oh boy, I need to zoom out more. And again, we have the uh, four attachment points on top of the aerodynamic bits with the fifth in the middle. And if we go down to the bottom, we have a whole lot more attachment points for various engines and other aerodynamic elements. Quite a cool, gigantic thing. Oh boy, oh boy is it big. And then the next part we have is the dual fuel tank for A12. And oh god, it's even larger. Oh boy. And there we go. <laughs> I love this thing. And again, we have a number of attachment points with the central core sort of attachment point and then pieces for other aerodynamic elements on the top. As well as, if we just kind of bring that up a bit and zoom down, a crap load of attachment points on the bottom. Look at all that stuff. It's just, it's crazy and it's wonderful. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the next part we have is the fuel tank for the A4, and there we go, getting back down to a more reasonable size. I zoomed out rather than in. There we are. Good texturing on this. I do like the, well, actually, it's pretty basic texturing, but I do like just the fun detail, the caution, etc., and all that. 
And as for its stats here, 212 liquid fuel and 259 oxidizer. The next thing we have is actually not German. It is a redstone fuel tank with 651 liquid fuel and 795 oxidizer. And, um... Yeah, apparently according to the mod page, it's sort of a uh, bridging element between this mod and FASA, so that's why it exists here. Uh, but yeah, I just, I still find it kind of strange though with all these other, you know, World War II German things. But hey, there we are, nice big fuel tank with 651 liquid fuel and 795 oxidizer. We then have the fuel tank for the A1 and A2 with 0.7 liquid fuel, and look at how tiny that thing is, it's, um, a very, very tiny thing. We then, of course, also have the nitrogen tank for the A1 and A2 with xenon gas. And again, tiny, tiny little thing. And it holds 13.1 xenon gas and the A1 and A2 rocket oxygen tank holding 0.9 oxidizer. And again, really tiny tank. There we are. And I did a skip one piece here that I just noticed. We have the high-pressure starter fuel tank for the A-10 with 49.5 liquid fuel and 60 oxidizer. And there we go. Interesting looking thing. Love the modeling on it. Texturing, yeah, but the modeling is really awesome. And then finally we have the oxygen tank for the A-3, A-5 rockets with uh, 15 oxidizer and 39 xenon gas. And there we are lovely thing there we go and then moving on to engines we have some awesome ones the first one being the a10 rocket engine with a max thrust of 604 kilonewtons isp of 247 using liquid fuel and oxidizer and i have to zoom out because holy crap it's big and again multiple attachment points for this thing for aerodynamic covering elements to it which we'll get to of course in the aerodynamics tab and has Beautiful detail. Look at how gorgeously made this and basically all the rest of the engines are. There is a whole lot of detail to them, which is very, very nice to have. Now, the next thing we have is the A-10 rocket engine, which, I mean, same name, but as you can see between the two. But different design. This one has 10 degrees of gimbling, 604 kilonewtons of max thrust, 247 in the ISP, and of course liquid fuel and oxidizer, and uh, yeah, has the has the graphite or graph, I forget exactly what they're made, graphene fins at the bottom? Oh, I'm forgetting what these rocket engines were made of now. Okay, but fun engine. Very cool. Next one is the A6 rocket engine with a max of 143 kilonewtons of thrust, 239 in the ISP, liquid fuel and oxidizer, and 3 degrees of gimbling, and there we go. Very cool engine. I'm kind of sad that the attachment point is where it is because you lose those cool looking tanks now of course if you attach it to its intended thing here in the mod it works well but if you want to attach it to some other part from some other mod then yeah it kind of phases into it a bit as you can see there but still cool engine the next is the ramjet for the a6 and this oh boy yeah I, I, uh, i'm gonna have to like, flip it around there we go it of course is radially attached to an aerodynamic point and is a uh, uh, little ramjet engine with a max thrust of 169 kilonewtons isp of 10,500 using liquid fuel and air intake has four degrees gimbling range and does have built-in air intake for its usage very fun the next is the V2 rocket engine, and being a V2 part, it's going to be tiny. Okay, zoom in. Tiny, tiny little engine. There it is, but, you know, functional with 0.7 kilonewtons of thrust. ISP of 123 using liquid fuel oxidizer and xenon gas for it to function. Oh, it's lovely. And then we have the A3 rocket engine, another small engine, but not quite as small, of course, as the A2. This one having 3.85 kilonewtons of thrust with 123 ISP, using liquid fuel oxidizer, xenon gas, has a gimbling, and of course does have some built-in liquid fuel of 12.6. And then finally, we have the venerable A4 rocket engine. Pop that baby on, and oh, it's just glorious. I, I love this one. It's my favorite. Just look at all the piping on it. It's so cool looking. And it, of course, has 72 kilonewtons of thrust with a max ISP of 191. A liquid fuel and oxidizer does have a gimbling on it, which is always good. And that is it for those. I should actually probably leave on one of these things for the aerodynamic bits we'll get to in a moment. But let's zoom out. In command and control, we have nothing. In structural, we do have two things. Both are for the a2 and they are a launch base and as well as a launch 
guide for you to pop the tiny little A2 rocket onto for it to basically use as a miniature little launch tower there. Kind of a nice little addition. I enjoy it. Very cool. Then in coupling, we have a couple of things. Oh boy, no, to grab the wrong thing there. Meant to just grab that. Excellent. The first is the A10 interstage frame decoupler. There we are. Big decoupler for large A10 parts. We then have the A12 interstage frame and decoupler. Very fun because, of course, it is not just a decoupler, but a cool looking frame that I could see using on a lot of other projects with other mods. I like it. Then the next is the A4 to A10 interstage frame and decoupler. There we are. Excellent. And finally, the A6 to A10 interstage frame and decoupler. There we go. Very beautiful, lovely parts. Then in payload, we got nothing. Aerodynamic, though. Ha <laughs> ha Beautiful things. Beautiful things. Now, as you remember, a lot of the fuel tanks as well as the engines had a multitude of uh, attachment points along the sides, and those were for a lot of these aerodynamic elements. Of course, for the fuel tanks, we are for the, yeah, the fuel tanks, we have these different aerodynamic fairings for the top cover on the A-10 in particular here, which, of course, has a decoupler force. But we also have a number of uh, control surfaces, like the these uh, swept wings for the A4B, which is a lovely control surface for you to use. We also have the A6 swept wing control surface. Very nice. I very much like that one. And then we have a couple of nose cones, an ablative aerodynamic nose cone with a built-in ablator. Lovely. And actually fits nicely onto... Huh, I hadn't noticed that before. It fits quite nicely onto the Mark I. <laughs> Perfect. It, of course, is made for the A4 parts, but hey... You can use it here too. And we have another one that's simply an aerodynamic nose cone with no ablator. We then also have an engine shroud for the redstone engines. Again, for those uh, redstone inter... Uh, uh, what was I calling it? Bridge parts. There we are. So you have that. Another fairing between stages, A11 to A10. And as you can see, the, it's just gigantic. There we are. Lovely. Actually, I gotta zoom out. I think the next one's even bigger. The A12 to A11 interstage fairing bit. There we go. Ooh, that thing is gigantic. Lovely. And then the wing for the A12 rocket, which is even bigger. Oh boy, look at just the size of that thing. Oh boy, there, there we are. And then, of course, we have the wing and fin for the A-10, which is much smaller, back to a more reasonable side. And, of course, with the engines and their control points, you would have these going around the whole thing. So you'd be attaching it to there and there to sort of enclose the engines. And then, moving on to the next one, we have the A-11 wing, which does, of course, have its attachment point a bit higher than the others. Excellent. We then have the wing slash fin for the A3. As you can see, it's a much smaller thing. Oh, let's zoom into that one. There you go. As it, it attaches up at the top and then makes like a circular little fin down at the bottom, which is quite fun. And then we have the one for this proper engine, which is the A4. There we are covering that. And as you can see how it would sort of fit together to uh, fully enclose this particular engine as such. There you go. We then have the, uh, the another A4 one with a just different control surface. So there we go, between the two different designs. Excellent. It's basically an extended control surface giving you more control. And then the next one is the A5 wing, which is tiny comparatively. We then have the A9 wing, which is a bit bigger. There we go. Very retro looking. And then finally the wing and fin for the redstone rocket, which this one is radially attached rather than going to one of the uh, attachment points. Beautiful. Now we have nothing in ground, nothing in thermal, nothing in electrical, nothing in communication, nothing in science, but in utility, we have our last three parts. One is an, a nose cone parachute for the A4, which again fits beautifully onto the this capsule as well, which just fascinates me. We also have the A9 to A6 nose landing gear, which is in aerodynamic rather than in ground for some reason, but hey! Landing gear, there you go, you have it now. And finally, the aggregate parachute, which is just a big 
big parachute. There you go. You can radially attach it to things and have a nice camouflage parachute for your missions. And those are all the parts for this particular mod. Now, on to what I built with it. I, <laughs> I'll admit, I tried to put together an uh, A10 or A12 with the parts, but I was having just difficulty getting everything I needed together properly, so I just built the much more simple A4 rocket, which again is sort of the, uh, well, copy of the V2, and here we are, a lovely full rocket. Let's just go and take a launch with this to show off the parts in uh, practice, and well, ra rather in function. But yes, it's a lovely little selection of parts. I've, uh, like I said earlier, I've always been fascinated by especially the V2. This really did birth the space race once we and the Russians got their hands on them. And yeah, it's just fun to build them properly here in the Kerbal Space Program and fly. So let's, ooh, God, I actually need to stage this. There we go. I have the parachute nose cone on this. And we'll launch it in three, two, one, liftoff. And, oh, got thrust up. There we are. And let's put it on a ballistic trajectory because, I mean, it was a V2 after all. <laughs> oh god, I, I think I angled too much. We're gonna hit the space. Oh god, we're gonna hit the VAB. Well, it didn't die. It just broke the nose cone. And some of the fins. Ha! Huh. Well, I didn't intend to do that, but hey. But, oh my god, it's flying like a plane now. <laughs> Completely unintentional. My hope was to fly over the vehicle assembly building and off into the distance. But now we've created an impromptu plane. Lovely. But yes, that is the Werner's Old Bits mod. A lovely little selection of parts to build some historic spacecraft. Well, historic rockets that inevitably led to spacecraft. So if you'd like to take a look at it for yourself, which I would recommend you go and do, you can have a look at the link in the description as per usual. But that is going to be it for today. I hope you have enjoyed and that you do come back for the next episode when hopefully we'll be looking at yet another wonderful mod. But until then, thank you for watching. And as always, have a good one.